Over the past few months, there's one major problem that I've noticed from Valorant players between Platinum and Iron. And while there are large skill discrepancies between these ranks, this fundamental concept is rarely applied in matches until you reach Diamond or higher. In this video, I'll explain this all important concept and explain the many ways you can apply it to your ranked games. Hey guys, ZK here with another informative Valorant video. Have you ever played a ranked match and every time the enemy team attacks a certain site, you and your teammates can't hold it for the life of you? The two people anchoring the site die, leaving the remaining three players in a 3v5 situation over and over again. There are a multitude of reasons as to why this could be happening, but the single biggest one, especially in mid to low elo, is because players don't understand the concept of map control. And this is the single biggest strategical concept holding back players in this elo. Map Map control is a concept that can be applied to many different FPS games. Valorant, CSGO, Call of Duty, and many more. And while map control is imperative at the professional level of Valorant, I don't hear it talked about much in the mid elo ranks, which is very surprising, especially compared to Counter Strike. Map control is exactly what it sounds like the areas of the map that your team currently owns or is in control of. But why is this important? Let's go back to the example that I used earlier in the video, where your team can't hold a site to save the life of you. We'll use Haven in this instance. The two players anchoring A, Sova and Jet, are sitting on the back of site and graffiti from the moment the round starts up until the attacking team is ready to execute the site. But what's inherently wrong with this? The answer is that the two players anchoring A site aren't fighting for map control. Let's break this down. Because both players are sitting on the back of A site from the time the round starts, this concedes A lobby, A short, and A long for absolutely free to the attacking team. As a result, the attacking team can save all of their utility for the site execute. Sova dart, flashes, mollies, and jet dash, which leaves the defending jet and Sova completely out to dry because they're getting flushed out by util. This can be super frustrating for everyone, the two players that are anchoring a site because they probably have no idea what they're doing wrong, and of course, the other three teammates that are playing a 3v5 retake round after round. So what can you do to fix this? The answer is fight for map control. Think about it like this. It's impossible for the attacking team to take control of a site if they don't have control of A long and A short in the first place. Now, there are infinite ways to go about retaining map control, but a super common one for A site on Haven is for the Sova to play toward long and send a dart to A lobby at the beginning of every round, while the Jet plays short with an operator and tries to get an early pick in assistance with the recon dart. And while a simple recon dart might not slow down a rush, it will allow you to relay the information over to the rest of your team a lot earlier than you would if you were just sitting on the back of sight like we talked about earlier. This can allow your teammates to rotate before the attacking team's execute takes place so you can hopefully have more than two people on site. Now, I wanna be very clear on something. While I'm telling you to fight for map control, I'm not suggesting that you fight until your death for it each round. Let's say Say you send the recon dart to a lobby from long and the jet who's playing short with the operator gets a pick it's likely going to be a bad decision to re-aggress this part of the map especially since you just got the first pick of the round since you're already up in numbers and it being a 5v4 it's best to relay the information of the enemy team's presence toward a to the rest of your teammates and at this point if you're the operator you can fall back to a different angle such as holding the bottom of sewers from the a short cubby this does concede the first part of sewers but it doesn't allow the enemy team to scale all the Way up to site and you have another chance at getting a good pick if you guys are enjoying the content make sure you subscribe leave a like and turn on post notifications so you don't miss one of the weekly videos that i post on this channel i also stream every day at 10 30 a.m eastern time on the purple streaming platform so feel free to come say what's up and hang out with the community now let's get back to the video in the first example i gave about map control i talked about how sova can send a dart to a lobby and the jet could simultaneously peek short with it but there are an infinite amount of ways that you can go about in retaining map control so let's take a look at a clip from VCT that is based around owning different parts of the map. We'll start with this match between Cloud9 and the Guard from NA's Challengers 1 qualifiers. This is the first buy round of the game, and you'll see that Jonah P, who's the breach for the Guard, sits in A Link to stun the entirety of A Lobby at the beginning of the round. Now, one thing to note with this setup is that Guard has three players on A, and this is a gamble stack that they're willing to make for a few reasons. They use two chamber trips, one in Garage and one in the front of B to play reactively there, but also because Net, who's the chamber player for the guard, has a super aggressive TP on C long to try to get a pick 
and then teleport out and play retake with his team. Anyway, let's see what happens in this brawl toward A long. Leaf satchels instantly as he's probably expecting this breach fault line to come through and he's trying to beat it. But the problem with these satchels is that they don't do too much because the rest of his team is stunned in A lobby from the breach. And look at how much utility was used from the attacking side. They start with a breach fault line of their own toward long, Leaf satchels that we just talked about toward long, a raise grenade long, a boom bot long, and a breach aftershock long. And yes, at the end of the day, Saya player is forced to use his dash and give up this part of the map, but this is a win in the guards book because they made Cloud9 use so much utility in order to give up this one small part of the map. At this point, Cloud9 knows that there's no way they can execute site with such little control leading up to A, especially after they had to burn so much utility toward long. And as they double back towards C, remember that we talked about the aggressive angle that Net was taking with his teleporters. He was able to get the first pick of the round and instantly TP out so his team can play retake with a 5v4 man advantage. Between the breach stun A, the sky and jet doubling up on A long, and the aggressive chamber TP setup towards C long, this round was won by the amount of map control that guard was able to retain throughout the round. At this point, it's time for you to think. Map control isn't a concept that's exclusive to the map haven. It can be applied to every part of every single map in Valorant. On the defensive side of bind, for example, retaining control of hookah and B long can make it almost impossible for the attacking team to execute the B site. But now that you understand this concept, I don't need to explain the different parts of every map where map control can be fought for. It's time for you to apply it in your ranked games. Thanks so much for watching this video. The growth I've been seeing on this channel has been incredible lately, and I'm very, very grateful for the support. Check out one of my other videos here, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Peace.